Hey fellow YouTubers, what do you think of my safety glasses and my headlight? Both of the, these things are for work because I work in manufacturing now. But anyways, this video is completely new and this is called things we have noticed and what needs to change. Let's get into the video shall we? So the biggest thing that we autistic individuals, being on the autism spectrum myself, have noticed in the community are these things. And we're going to talk about what needs to end, how you can relate to someone with autism better, and this is very important to know because I think a lot of people are very, I would say, out of touch with other people with autism from time to time. So here are some double standards that need to end. This is the first double standard that needs to end. Telling an autistic visual how to fit in and then only to turn around to say that's not okay that's inappropriate when an autistic individual tries to fit in this double standard is very wrong for people with autism because people with autism will get offended by this and on top of that autistic people are very independent thinkers so let's say for example you tell an autistic person, hey, I like pop music. It's new in Hollywood and you should listen to it too. And then you turn around and tell that autistic individual, no, you can't listen to that. That's inappropriate. That's wrong. This is very bad for someone with autism because of the fact that the autistic visual is going to go like this. Okay, if I'm not allowed to listen to pop music, I'm gonna go listen to metal or some other musical genre. And it's because they're so much more accepting of me. So this is why this is a bad double standard for people with autism. So now, let's say if an autistic individual loves cars, he wants cars, and he always has been dreaming of owning a car. It's wrong to refuse to allow him to have a car because if that's all he talks about, that means he wants a car. And it's also wrong and inappropriate to give the car to a neurotypical kid when you know that neurotypical kid is going to crash it, wreck it, and he hates cars, is afraid of driving, and wants to go to college, and has no interest in cars. So, if you would allow autistic individual to have cars, you know, motorcycles, that would be great too, because of the fact that, you know, if you're autistic, child, teenager, is already a really good driver, you should allow him to have a car. You know, he'll never crash it, he'll never wreck it, he'll take really good care of it. Now you might have to remind him to clean it from time to time, but it's wrong to completely refuse him to allow him to have a car of his own, especially when he's a really good driver. Another bad double standard for people with autism is that when they are straightforward with you, it's considered bad communication. But when a neurotypical says one thing but means something else, it's considered good communication. This is another bad double standard because of the fact that you're basically implying that an autistic person doesn't know how to communicate and cannot communicate at all. You're making them feel less 
worthy of themselves. And this is something that needs to end as well because um, an autistic individual will have a fit about it and he will probably be really mad about it too, most likely. So let's say for example that um, an autistic individual says, your shirt is yellow and your shirt really is yellow, but you're getting offended with him because he says, your shirt is yellow. Whereas the neurotypical says, oh, your shirt looks like a banana. And you go, wait, what? And he said, what I mean by that is that your shirt looks as yellow as banana. So again, um, and this is something that is very, it's very frustrating for a lot of people with autism because of the fact that, you know, the neurotypical who, who said to the guy, your shirt looks like a banana. Um, he is saying, oh, thanks man for meaning my shirt is as yellow as a banana. So this is why it's um, very offensive to autistic people. Another double standard that needs to end, and I've noticed it throughout the school systems and in adulthood, as well as a lot of other kids who have autism. And this is the topic of bullying. When a neurotypical kid gets bullied, teased, harassed, and his needs are automatically met and they're automatically taken care of. But yet he still feels like he's being ignored even though his needs are automatically met. And then all of a sudden an autistic individual comes in and um, he says, I'm being bullied, teased, harassed as well. And all of a sudden, his needs are ignored, they're shunned, they're looked down upon, and then he does something to get revenge on his bullying. And then all of a sudden, um, it's like, oh man, that's inappropriate, that's wrong, why would you do that to your tormentor? This is a double standard that needs to end. For example, let's say if um, a neurotypical kid wore his um, Star Wars shirt to school and everyone bullies, teases him, and um, all of a sudden the teacher or person in authority says, oh, I'm so sorry, that must have been really rough for you. I'll take care of it right away. And then he goes, but that doesn't help anything. It's being ignored. And then the autistic individual comes in and wears the Star Wars shirt says, hey, I've been bullied, I've been teased, I've been harassed, and it's really hurtful. And then the teacher just goes, you know what, I don't have time for this. You're going to have to get over this or figure this out for yourself. You know, we don't have the um, resources to take care of this. This is an inappropriate double standard that needs to end. And I think that's a good example of how people who are bullied on the autism spectrum. It's why they don't go to others for help and take care of the bullies themselves because they already know they're gonna be ignored. Another thing that needs to end in between um, autistic people and neurotypicals is expecting autistic people to have excellent social skills while not expecting neurotypicals to have excellent social skills. And why? Because we can all work on social skills. We can all work on socializing. Nobody's going to be perfect, you know, when it comes to socializing. So expecting an autistic kid to have excellent social skills and pushing him more into that, he's really going to be offended by that and is really going to not like you for that and i'm hoping that we would stop this
because as an autistic individual myself, I have had this in my life. Let's move on to stop doing these things to autistic people. Number one, accuse them of lying. You would hate it too. Oh, lying to somebody is completely different. Tell me what I lied about. No, I'm, I'm not getting lied Because there is nothing. Accusing somebody of lying, that's, that's how it personal. To me. It Let's lying. just say it's a good thing that people can't be voted off. <laughs> Another thing we have noticed in the autistic community is that when a neurotypical lies, his body language is really good, that he is believed to tell the truth. But when an autistic individual tells the truth, but his body language goes off, he's lying, he is automatically accused of lying. This ties in with the first one, accusing an autistic individual of lying. And this is why it's important that this ends and that you need to teach someone with autism body language and what someone might be interpreting on the inside. And it's also good to get together with people with autism who are also autistic and um, they can learn from other autistic individuals how they're communicating and why things give off certain bad vibes to neurotypicals. Another thing that we've noticed in the autistic community is that we don't pick up on body language that well. And this ties in with the second thing that I mentioned is that when it comes to body language, it is very important to teach autistic people body language or else they're not going to understand it. And when you communicate to someone with autism with body language, you know, for instance, a smile can mean very many different things, but it can mean that you're happy or that someone likes you, but certain smiles don't really mean that and it means they are faking that smile. So stuff like that is very important to be taught to people with autism. And um, expecting people with autism to get body language is a bad thing because it doesn't help an autistic individual grow as an individual. And then we have expecting someone with autism to get the hidden agenda of the world around them. This is something that is not verbally told to people with autism, and you need to teach them how to um, get the hidden agenda because the hidden agenda is basically behavior that is expected of you or behavior that neurotypicals do and autistic people just don't get this at all and it's why it is very important for someone with autism to understand the hidden agenda or else they're just going to keep on listening to metal rock keep on playing on video games keep on tuning tuning out the hidden agenda and the rest of the uh neurotypical world and it's very important and very key that what's implied in the hidden agenda. So for instance, I've known for years that I've implied the hidden agenda when it comes for men to be effeminate, wimpy, and girly. Now this is not true to a lot of people, but that's what I've implied it to be over the years. And last, but certainly not least, expecting autistic people to change. This is very offensive to people with autism because of the fact that when it comes to people with autism, that'd be like me expecting a neurotypical to change. You know, change your body language, change your behavior, change it all. Now, I get that when people are mean, yeah, 
be, then that person does need to change. You know, don't get me wrong. But when it comes to like hobbies, interests, certain things like that, um, then that's not what autistic people are feeling. They don't want to change. Change is something that takes a while to get used to that. So let me put it to you this way. Imagine being in a world where only autistic people existed and you were the non-autistic person. You know, it would be a very awkward and uncomfortable world. You, you would have to learn to live in a world filled with autistic people. And it's very much like that. So for instance, a boy may be obsessed with spaceships and aliens like Buster in the uh, TV show or sitcom Arthur. And he is uh, obsessed with aliens to the point where he actually wants to study it. But you say, that's not normal behavior. You know, that's bad behavior. You know, a lot of people in the autistic community are going to be very offended by that. And the reason why is because you're expecting him to change. And it's very important to say, oh, you like metal, you like cars, you love Jesus slash religion, you like all these things. That's awesome, man, that's cool. I'm okay, you're okay. So anyways, guys, if you made it this far, I appreciate you making it this far. Don't forget to hit, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and I appreciate you watching my videos. There's gonna be links in the description below as always. Um, that would include my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook page, and also my GoFundMe page where I can hopefully fulfill my lifelong dream of making an official Star Wars fan film. So my subscribers and viewers mean the world to me, obviously. And um, I make these videos for you, not just for me, but for you as well. And I appreciate that. You guys mean the world to me. Have a fantastic week. God bless. May the force be with you always. Hope to upload another video for you guys again soon.